Hey, thank you very much, Rachel. Right, I, I will share my screen now. which I believe has now been done. Does that look good? Great. Okay, so um, thank you very much, Rachel, for that excellent introduction and um, welcome to the Collaborations Workshop. And I have the, uh, the pleasure of welcoming you to the 14th Collaborations Workshop. Rachel was saying how, how quickly the last one went past, but it's uh, truly terrifying how quickly 14 have gone past over the past couple of decades. Um, so I'm Simon Hetrick, I'm the Deputy Director of the Software Sustainability Institute. I've got a few minutes this morning just to give you an introduction to us. Um, I'm going to talk about how the workshop works. I'm going to um, talk about something very close to me that I, that an uh, anniversary that we're celebrating that started here at the Collaborations Workshop. Um, but first of all, I'd like to talk a little bit about the, the, SAS, uh, the Software Sustainability Institute. So the Institute was set up in 2010. It was originally funded by the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, um, but we've since been joined by all of the research councils in the UK. We are a national facility for cultivating better, more sustainable research software to enable world-class research. And that's the strap line. Um, but if you, if you really want to know what we care about and what we do, then it's probably best just to look at the back of our t-shirts. Better software, better research is, is what we believe in. Um, because we think that the software that underpins the vast majority of research should be as reliable and as reproducible as the research itself. And that's ultimately our goal. This idea about how we get to better software, however, that's software sustainability. So uh, let's, let's take a look at that. <clears throat> when we first set up the Institute in 2010, um, we thought one of the main ways that we could push software in the right direction would be by allowing researchers access to our, to our research software engineers and the, the good practices that researchers would learn from them would propagate through the community. Now, when we started, there was eight of us and there were 210,000 researchers in the UK. So that was quite a large ask. So we quickly realized that we needed to be investing in, in scalable activities. And, then, and that's, that's where we focus now. So we do a lot of work on skills getting training out there up, um, and upskilling the, the research community in general. We raise awareness of um, the software that, that is so vital to research, do comms and into to that. Good. Here we go again. Um, then we do a lot of community building. So you'll see, you know, you'll definitely hear about our fellowship, um, which is something that we're, we're very proud of and you should, uh, you should look, look into. Um, and we run events like the Collaborations Workshop and we nudge policy in the right direction through our work with, with, the, with the policy um, team. And of course, we still do a lot of, a lot of research software engineering. Now, when you're a small organization facing a problem like this, you realize very quickly that we are in the business of changing academic culture. And that is not something that it is easy to do on your own. So we quickly realized that we had to work with others to build collaborations and find the problems that were, that were shared across the research community and that other people would join us in trying to solve. And it's this kind of, kind of idea that led to one of our other mantras, which is collaborate, don't compete. Ultimately, what this means is that we think you can get more done with less waste if you work with other people. And it's this collaborative nature, that the collaborations events, uh, the collaborations workshop is based on. Um, we want you to come together, look at the kind of issues and problems that we face in the research community and come up with shared solutions. And that brings me to the collaborations workshop itself. Um, so this is this is an unconference, and that means that you're in a slightly daunting position of not being an audience member, but being an actual participant in the workshop. Uh, we're not going to just lecture you with PowerPoint after PowerPoint. We have lots of different sessions that Rachel's already talked about, discussion ideas sessions, collaborative ideas, lightning talks, and lots of other ways on Slack and other, and other ways to, to, to talk to each other. So we really want you to come in and be and to participate uh, in the workshop uh, as an active member, not just as an audience member. Now, this means that uh, it's completely normal for someone to just join you and, and start chipping into the conversation you're having with other people. Um, I say it's normal, it's actively encouraged. So, um, so, so prepare yourself for that change in from standard academic conferences. Um, another duty on you as a participant means that you, you, it, it's really useful if you let us know if things aren't working. Because um, if you let us know if things aren't working, we can look to help 
we can look to fix it. And we are more, we're more than happy for you to suggest that fix yourself so we can implement it. Um, so an unconference does sound kind of chaotic, um, and that's probably because it is, but it's a sort of fun chaos. Um, but there are, there are some simple rules. So everything we do over the next few days is based on this environment being welcoming, supportive, and friendly. Uh, so the most important rule is that you need to invite people into your conversations, um, be open to new ideas, credit ideas that come out, and contribute yourself to those discussions. And if we can do all of that, we will have the right environment for, for um, bringing together these collaborative ideas. Um, Rachel's already talked about the code of conduct, you must follow that, uh, and please let us know if there's any non-inclusive behaviour um, so we can do something about it. And uh, so also, as Rachel said, we are online again. We did hope to be in person this year, but we've not quite made it. Maybe, maybe 2023 will be the first uh, in-person collaborations workshop for a while. It's very important um, when you spend days on Zoom to take breaks. So please do make advantage of the breaks. Get up. If the weather's a bit less miserable than it is here in Southampton, you might even be able to get outside and get some sun. Um, so please do take those breaks. Now, um, at the start, I said that we are celebrating an anniversary, and that anniversary is it's been 10 years since the term research software engineer was coined at this very event. So back in 2012 in Oxford, we ran a collaborations workshop. Um, a group got together from one of the discussion sessions, and they decided they wanted to talk about the issues that people who develop software in academia face. And the main issue was that there, is, there was no career path for, for people who develop software. Um, and that meant that the, the software developers were pushed into uh, postdoctoral positions, which meant they spent their days writing code, but their, the success of their career was based on the papers they didn't write and the research funding that they, they weren't allowed to apply for. And obviously this meant we were taking the people who were producing this vital tool for all of research, and we were pushing them into a dead end career, so they, they, they couldn't go anywhere. And obviously that was a massive problem if we want good, reliable, reproducible software. If we want that kind of software, we need to support the career of people who, who, who produce it. Um, in 2013, the Institute picked this up as a campaign and we started fighting for the, the recognition and reward of the research software engineering community. It has started from literally a handful of people and it's now a very large influential community that spans the entire world. Uh, we have our own learned society, the Society of Research Software Engineering, which you should look into and, and join up if you agree with, our, with its aims. Um, we have re RSE groups at 31 different organisations within the UK. We have national RSE associations um, across seven different countries. In fact, I think RSE Asia, is with, RSE Asia is with us today, so hopefully that'll be over eight different countries. And um, and the most important thing is that we've got literally thousands of people now in a career that rewards them for doing the work that they're meant to be doing. And that is by far the biggest success that, that, that we could possibly want. Um, so the RSE career, the RSE campaign took over quite a significant majority of my working life. So I will give you this warning for the collaborations workshop. Um, be very careful what you say, because it could set the direction of your future career. So happy birthday to RSE. Uh, I've got one more slide that I want to just quickly go through. Um, so what happens next? Well, this is all about sharing ideas and building collaborations. Hopefully that's apparent from what myself and Rachel have been saying. So go out there, meet new people, get chatting on Slack, talk in Zoom, plan, come up with ideas. That's what it's all about. Um, we're all told, you know, there's no such thing as a bad idea. No idea is too trivial. And I think most people understand that. But for this event, no idea is too aspirational either. When we first were looking at how to, to change things, how to change academic culture with RSE, we were told time and time again, we would never achieve it, not possible to shift academic culture, and it turns out it is. So we really want your small ideas, but we also really want your big ideas. So no idea is too aspirational. And ultimately, this event is all about getting together with other inspirational and intelligent people and having a chat. So quite frankly, go out there and have fun. Um, that's everything I wanted to say, so I'll just say thank you and welcome again to the Collaborations Workshop. Amazing.